So an extension of that. Uh, in today's day and age, and it's not a question of either or. Uh, what you imbibe is also a good reflection of what this whole argument about nuclear families in today's modern India versus an existence of a joint family in a modern India. That argument is also uh, brought about. How do you see that? I mean, and no, none of them is a good or a bad choice. No, obviously, it's not a good or bad choice. Uh, everyone has to make that choice. Uh, we've decided as a family to stay together, and we've been like that since since I can remember. And uh, uh, I think I mean there are a lot of positives daily. Uh, there's a, there's a security. I mean, we know all the positives. And there are you have to be willing to give up a few things, uh, which probably sometimes as you as the as times are changing, people are not willing to give up. But if you're willing to give up a few your individualistic uh, um, thoughts, then I think uh, and and as I said, if you enjoy uh, being with the family and, and and don't consider it, you know that oh boy, I got to go for dinner now. Uh, if you don't have that thought, then I think it's there's tremendous amount of uh, strength and stability. Which it provides, uh, which it provides, and, and, and more importantly for the children. A quick thought on that: Do you have a view on this uh, concept of family staying together? Because the reason why I say that the IT world, for example, or today's day and age, is so fast. Everybody says life is moving so fast; we can't really uh, be with everybody has their own thing. So maybe the virtue of patience, communication, all these things start coming up, which could actually benefit in business. But we tend to ignore it. That's family, and this is work. Right. Yeah, so um, I think. I may, I may offer a contrary view in terms of. Uh, That's the whole idea. So go ahead and do it. Not in terms of for my family how it works and what, what the thought process of my grandfather was. I think he believed that um, uh, being uh, having the same blood doesn't mean that you need to be in the same business, uh, and you can be having a different set of, uh, in, including the household and the family is completely separate. And um, as much as you want it, you should keep it separate. So that was the philosophy with which he went by, and he made sure that his three sons were uh, separated out while he was alive, and in completely differently, but staying together in the same building. Um, uh, that offers a very different kind of a thing. It, it's a harder at first, but as you keep going along, I'm seeing it that maybe it's much nicer because now uh, you don't have any complicated lawsuits against each other or any kind of uh, uh, ill feeling towards each other. I think. Uh, the primary reason of being family is still maintained, and uh, you are uh, continuing to do what you want to do. Uh, I think, and I've see, begun to see what he want, wanted us to do. And uh, although we could have built, a, maybe there could be a chance that all the family are together and build a nice, or bigger, even bigger, or potentially bigger business. Um, uh, the risk on the downside is that if it does not happen, then you are. Not only not having the business, but not having the family so, as well. So, in some ways, uh, from a shareholder value creation question, a lot of people would quiz you, saying, you know, I mean, there is an example in India's corporate history that uh, family went separate ways and created much more shareholder wealth. Uh, I'm sure you've quizzed that by people. Uh, how do you counter that argument? I mean, there's no one right answer and one right example. One example is the one which you have given. Uh, and then there are many, many examples where you know people have stayed together and created a lot of value. Uh, as I said, it's got to be it's uh, it's an individual's uh, decision or a family's decision whether uh, I think everybody tries to keep it together, and then they yeah. want to keep it together. I think everybody starts off. I think if at the starting point, everybody tries to keep it together. And then if it doesn't stay together, then obviously. That doesn't mean that's not the end of the world. It means okay, you got to, uh, you have a, uh, as an individual, you have the, the same passion, or you have uh, probably a, a greater passion to prove to the world. Right. And uh, yeah, and sometimes uh, from a shareholder perspective, it may be better. But I don't think families start out uh, with the, with the, or even the thought crosses the mind that look, you know, if you are to, if you are, if you are separate, then probably will get more value. Right. Do we have more? Yeah. We, we are running out of time, so I'm going to have the last question. Because similar, we're going to skip it. So, how do you no, that was one last question I'm going to do. Uh, and Shivnath, I'm also going to ask you the question finally as well. So, last question for Mr. Rhea is, uh, how do you handle power politics in a family-run business, especially when it comes to succession? Positions of leadership, yeah. 
So <laughs> this is the most difficult one, right? And yeah. he is the group chief executive, just to uh, qualify. No, and make I, it more difficult for you. You know, and I think, uh, as I said, it's again got to do with, uh, uh, you know, people have to, even the, even amongst the second generation or third generation, whoever is going to be the leader. And obviously in India, uh, by obvious choice, the elder elder one gets that uh, mantle. At least is he has 80% chance as compared to the others. But I, I think the important thing is to, again, for him or her to be able to earn the respect and of the of his brothers or sisters or whatever. Because if they don't believe in him and if they don't look forward or look up to the, him or her, then, you know, you may get the title, but you're not going to be able to perform. And uh, keep, you know, and while from the public world, yes, there is a difference that one person is the leader and successor, but within the family, I think it's important to maintain significant amount of equality. Doesn't mean that if you are the leader now, every, it, it's my way or the highway. It's it's got to be that you got to still carry everybody along, and uh, and sure for the public, from the public face, you are the you are the front. But that doesn't mean that the other members are not as important or or as or don't have an equal say in the decisions. You are one amongst the equals. That's Absolutely. that's the whole idea. All right, so, so we have time for any more uh, no, questions from the audience. No, last last question will be to you, Shivnath, and we, are, we do have to stop. And uh, the question again is, uh, what, made what made you switch okay. from MJ okay. TV to SR? Um, I was not expecting this, but I can share with you that when we walked up on the stage, we had a pact that on the stage he is not my boss and I'm not his employee. So I will answer it as independently uh, as I can. Uh, whatever he said, a lot of it happens in practice. And I think that is very inspiring. And that's something which was the lure. And I will leave it there. And that's why I am with him. But thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Prashant Rohia, Prashant Choksi. And it was good having you all. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Just, just a minute, please. Dear Prashant, for Shonat and Prashant, thanks a lot to all three of you for taking the time out and sharing valuable thoughts and wisdom. Ty is a new privilege to have you here and as a token of a gratitude on your behalf, you have taken a liberty of uh, donating money to our midday scheme. So this is a letter of appreciation from us.